Assalam o Alaikum. I am Dr. Sani Asif. Today we will discuss about the histology of the connective tissue. What is connective tissue? This is a supporting tissue which support all the cells and the uh, components in the body. Its contents are the introduction. We will discuss its introduction. Then we will classify the connective tissue. Well, then we will discuss the functions of the connective tissue. Then what are the components of connective tissue and types? These are all our learning objectives which will be discussed. in this lecture first of all introduction uh, most widespread and abundant type of tissue in the human body is connective tissue major constituent is the extracellular matrix which is composed of fibers ground substance and tissue fluid embedded within the extracellular matrix are the connective tissue cells so mainly the connective tissue has three components which are cells fibers and ground substance it forms a vast and continuous compartment throughout the body bounded by basal lamina of epithelia and by basal lamina of muscle nerves and vascular endothelium now Uh, about the classification of the connective tissue classification is based on the composition and organization of cellular and extracellular components and on special functions it is mainly classified into three types connective tissue proper specialized connective tissue and embryonic connective tissue now we will discuss them one by one first of all connective tissue proper it is further divided into the loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue loose connective tissue as the name indicates it has less number of fibers and in case of dense connective tissue there will be more number of fibers dense connective tissue is further divided into the regularly arranged dense connective tissue and irregularly arranged connective tissue fibers then the specialized connective tissue specialized connective tissue have adipose connective tissue reticular connective tissue and elastic connective tissue these are the three types of specialized connective tissue firstly we discuss the connective tissue proper then specialized connective tissue and now the embryonal connective tissue which is divided into the mesenchymal connective tissue and mucous connective tissue what are the functions of connective tissue it is very much abundant then what are its functions it forms the capsules that surrounds the organs of the body and the internal architecture it makes up the tendons ligaments and areolar tissue that fills the spaces between the tissues bone cartilage and adipose tissue are specialized type of connective tissue that support the soft tissue of the body and store fat it has the role in defending the organism due to the phagocytic and immunocompetent cells phagocytic cells engulf inert particles and microorganisms that enter the body specific proteins called the antibodies are produced by the plasma cells in the connective tissue plasma cells are one of the cells which are present in the connective tissue so they produce the antibodies Connective tissue provides physical barrier. It plays a role in the cell nutrition and serves as a medium through which nutrients and metabolic waste are exchanged between cells and their blood supply. These were the few functions. Now we will discuss about the main components, basic components of the connective tissue. What are these? These are ground substance, fibers and cells. firstly we will discuss the ground substance ground substance is a very major component of the connective tissue a mi complex mixture of glycoproteins and pro proteoglycans make up the ground substance they participate in binding cells to the fibers of the connective tissues it is colorless and transparent it fills the space between the cells and the fibers 
and its consistency is viscous. It acts as both a lubricant and barrier to the penetration of foreign particles. Its nature is granular and its consistency varies from fluid to gel. Glycoproteins which are the main component of the ground substance of the connective tissue. These are proteins that contain oligosaccharide chains covalently attached to the polypeptide side chains. The carbohydrate is attached to the protein in a co-translational or post-translational modification. The major types of adhesive glycoproteins are the fibronectin, laminin and intactin. Fibronectin which is a glycoprotein synthesized by the fibroblast and some epithelial cells it binds the with the collagen it connect collagen fibers to the cells of the connective tissue next is the fibrillin it forms the elastic fibers in connective tissue and responsible for adhesion of different extracellular components to one another then last is the glycoprotein is the laminin it is present in the basement membrane. Laminin helps in adhesion of epithelial cells to the basal lamina. Intactin, it is an adhesive glycoprotein and it is seen in the embryonic tissue and plays a role in the cell migration. There are also other uh, glycoproteins which are chondronectin and osteopontin. Chondronectin and osteonectin are similar to the fibronectin. Chondronectin has binding sites for type 2 collagen, chondritin sulfates, hyaluronic acid and integrins of chondroblast and chondrocytes. While osteonectin possesses domains for the type 1 collagen, proteoglycans and integrins of osteoblast and osteocytes. This is the table which is showing the Tissue distribution and functions of these glycoproteins means fibronectin which is mainly widely distributed in the extracellular structures, cell surfaces and fibroblast and their function is the cell adhesion mainly then laminin its tissue distribution is the basal lamina and the external lamina of the muscle and its function is to bind to the epithelial and muscle cells. Then in tectin which is the present in the basal lamina again and binds to the laminin and type 4 collagen. Then these other are also very important. Chondronectin which is present in the cartilage and osteopontin as the name indicates it is present in the bone. Other substance in the ground substance are the glycosaminoglycanes or the mucopolysaccharides. These are the linear polysaccharides formed by the repeating disaccharide units. They are composed of a uronic acid and a hexosamine. Hexosamine can be glucosamine or glactosamine, while uronic acid can be glucuronic acid or hydronic acid. Linear chains are bound covalently to a protein core. Glycosaminoglycanes are long, inflexible, unbranched polysaccharides composed of chains of repeating disaccharide units. In cartilage, these are bound to the hyaluronic acid chain. Because of the abundance of the hydroxyl, carboxyl and sulfate groups, the proteoglycanes are hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means water loving and they act as the polyanion. Then these are the some glycosaminoglycanes. Their tissue distribution and functions are there. Number one is the hyaluronic acid, which is widely distributed, found in various amounts in all tissues and fluids in the adults. Loose connective tissue, skin, umbilical cord, vitreous, synovial fluid and the cartilage. And its function is to resist compressive forces in tissue and joints and space filler during embryonic development and also facilitate the cell migration. Next one is the chondritin sulfate which uh, is located in the hyaline and the elastic cartilage and the bone and it provides the mechanical support and forms large aggregations with the hyaluronic acid. 
then is the dermatone sulfate which is present in the dermis tendons ligaments heart valves and organ capsules and they bind to the type 1 collagen fibrils then the keratin sulfate which is present in the bone cartilage cornea and it provides the mechanical support then is the heparin sulfate which are present in the fibroblast and epithelial sur surface basal and external lamina and its function is the cell adhesion and it binds fibroblast growth factor factors structural and filtering functions in the basal lamina proteoglycans when sulfated glycosaminoglycans form covalent bonds with a protein core they form a family of macromolecules known as the proteoglycans they look like a bottle brush with the protein core resembling the wire stem and various sulfated glycosaminoglycans projecting from its surface in three dimensional space as do the bristles of the brush they are just like that as you can see in this diagram this is the picture which is showing the proteoglycan here the proteoglycan consists of a core protein here you can see this is the core protein and it consists of a pro uh, that binds the glycose aminoglycans these are the sulfated glycose glyc uh, sulfated glycose amino glycans these are attached to the core protein and a link protein that binds hyaluronic acid again a link protein is here this one is a link protein that will bind to the hyaluronic acid this one is the hyaluronic acid so till now we have discussed the first component of the connective tissue which is the ground substance now what are the functions of the ground substance they transport metabolites to and from the vascular channels they maintain the electrolyte balance fills up the space between cells and fibers of the connective tissue they act as a barrier to penetration of foreign particles into the tissues connective tissue fibers are long slender protein polymers we now discuss about what are the different types of the connective tissue fibers as i told you in my uh, initial slides that connective tissue has mainly three components ground substance fibers and cells up till now we have discussed about the ground substance we have discussed about its components which are proteoglycans glycoproteins etc and we have discussed its functions now we are coming to the second component of the connective tissue which are the connective tissue fibers there are three types of connective tissue fibers which are present in our body which are collagen fibers reticular fibers and elastic fibers first of all we will discuss the collagen fibers collagen protein you know this is the most abundant protein in our body so the most abundant protein in mammals is the collagen and it accounts for the 25 to 30% of the total protein content main fibrous component of the skin bone tendon cartilage and teeth all these components or the structures have the collagen fibers it comprises about 90% of the organic matrix of the bone that is why the bone has a strong and has a increased strength due to the presence of the 90% organic matrix in the form of collagen fibers what collagen colla comes from the greek meaning glue producer when collagen is heated in water it gradually breaks down to produce soluble derived protein that is gelatin or animal glue here you can see when you will heat it in water how it get convert and when you cool it 
become the in the gelatin formation the collagen fibers are made up of collagen as you can see here and they have a tensile strength an important structural component in tissues such as the periodontal ligament and muscle tendons in which the mechanical forces need to be transmitted without loss now what is the structure of the collagen fibers collagen subunit or tropocollagen is a rod about 300 nanometer long and 1.5 nanometer in diameter it is composed of three polypeptide alpha chains which are coiled around each other to form the triple helix configuration which is stabilized by numerous h2 bonds individual polypeptide chains contain approximately 1000 amino acid residues and alpha chains are left handed helices that wrap around each other into a right handed rope like triple helical rod this diagram you can see here this is the tropocollagen helix then uh, we will discuss the biosynthesis of collagen the collagen is involved in tissue differentiation growth and remodeling young tissue has high rate of collagen synthesis as the tissue matures in adults synthesis continues as a part of normal tissue turnover they have the highest rate of collagen turnover are observed in weight bearing bones lungs and periodontal tissues collagen synthesis is elevated under conditions like remodeling and replacement of tissues and during tissue repair elevated rates in pathological conditions such as fibrosis in lungs and liver now comes to the synthesis of the collagen firstly there are the synthesis of pro alpha chains these are in turn undergo hydroxylation of proline and lysine residues after that the hydroxylation there will be the subsequent glycosylation of these hydroxylysine in ribosomes after that there will be the assembly of pro alpha chains into the triple helix packaging of the pro collagen by the golgi into the secretory vesicles then these transport of pro collagen containing vesicles along cytoplasmic microtubules to the cell surface then there will be the cleavage of registration peptides to form tropocollagen molecules and then the assembly of tropocollagen molecules into the microfibrils and side by side cross linking of the collagen fibrils to form the collagen fibers vitamin c has a very important role in the hydroxylation process in the synthesis of the collagen cross linking of the collagen play a major role in structure and function most important cross links in collagen are derived from specific lysine and hydroxylysine if there is decrease in the cross links it will reduce the tensile strength of the collagen and contributes tissue fragility with increasing age collagen becomes more and more cross linked now we will discuss about the clinical significance of the collagen collagen are the most abundant proteins and alteration in the collagen structure resulting from abnormal genes or abnormal processing result in numerous diseases the most common are the osteogenesis imperfecta scurvy ehlers danlos syndrome alpert syndrome epidermolysis bulbosa strickler disease syndrome lupus erythematosus and scleroderma This is the diagram of the patient with the Ehlers Danlos syndrome here you can see there will the abnormal ability to elevate the right toe In this diagram the girl with the Ehlers Danlos syndrome the dorsiflexion of all fingers is easy and absolutely painless 
and in this diagram you can see patients with the ehlers danlos syndrome have the joint hypermobility is less intense than with the other conditions this is the diagram showing the patient with the sle which is the systemic lupus erythematosus here you can see the classical butterfly this one so up till now we have discussed about what is connective tissue and its components which are the ground substance fibers and the cells also we discuss about its classification and we discuss in the component the ground substance in the detail then we discuss about its fibers in which we have discussed about the collagen fibers the most abundance of the collagen protein its cross linkage and its importance then its biosynthesis and the clinical correlations now we will discuss the second type of fibers which are present in the connective tissue which are reticular fibers these are extremely thin with a diameter between 0.5 to 2 micron meter they form an extensive network not visible in in the hne disco how you will say the hematoxylin and eosin preparations this chain black by impregnation with the silver salts and they are per ardic acid shift positive this is a reagent of the staining where they give the magenta color they contain 6 to 12 percent hexose and compose mainly of the collagen type 3 in association with other types of collagen glycoproteins and proteoglycans they are formed by loosely packed thin fibrils bound together by abundant small interfibrillar bridges composed of glycoproteins and proteoglycans they are abundant in the smooth muscle and neurium and framework of the hemopoietic organs all the lymphatic organs you will discuss the lymph lymphoid system they have the reticular fibers and they constitute a network around the cells of the parenchymal organs small diameter and loose disposition of reticular fibers create a flexible network in organs that are subjected to changes in the form or volume such as artery spleen liver uterus and intestinal muscle layers elastic fiber system structure of the elastic fiber system developed through three successive stages first stage consists of the bundle of 10 nanometer microfibrils composed of various glycoproteins including one with a large molecule called fibrillin these oxytelin fibers can be found in the zonule fibers of the eye and epidermis In case of the second stage an irregular disposition deposition of the protein elastin appears between the oxytelin fibers forming the alanin fibers these structures are found around sweat glands and the dermis third stage in the form in the formation of the elastic fiber system is where the elastin gradually accumulates until it occupies the center of the fiber bundles which are further surrounded by a thin sheet of microfibrils these are the elastic fibers the most numerous component of the elastic fiber system elastic fibers which are rich in protein elastin they stretch easily in response to tension i hope you have understood well the ground substance and the fibers In the next lecture we will discuss about the cells. Thank you.